Okay, so this is the third problem, which is about periodic trend. And then they ask you to consider those five elements, um, the P. And I'm going to circle differently, S and SI. These are the one as you shown in the periodic table in the bottom. They are in the third row. Okay, And then the, I'm going to circle this calcium and the gallium which is shown up here so this is a calcium and the gallium and this is a when n is 4 right? and the one that up there which is a red circle this is a case when n is 3 so this as you probably re refresh your memory this is a 3s and the, that's the 3p and if you go down that's a 4s and that's a 4p, right? And then this is actually in the middle what happened to be a 3d, uh, 10 electron that filled it up. And that's how the electron uh, occupy and the fill up the electron orbital in a sequence. 4s first, 3d later, and then go back to 4p, and that's how they so, uh, the first question is, uh, say, can you write down electron configuration? So, instead of using the sequence what is shown up there, I just want to write down in a, probably in a, in a pattern of uh, the, the atomic number. So, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur, right? And this are the, this is, these are the three sets, and the, the electron configuration can be simplified by finding the noble gases that has a fewer electron than those atoms that you want to describe. So that's a 10. So it starts from the neon, right? And the, from neon, silicon is a four more electron, which means a 3s2, and then the, you have a P orbital right there. So it's a 3s2 and 3p2 here. Okay? And the P, which is a neon, and you have a 3 electron, so 3s2 and 3p3. So there's a 5 electron more, that's why it's a 15. And sulfur is this one, which is a neon, 3s2, 3p4. Okay? So I think that I just wanted to make sure that you have a P orbital showing up here, which is going to be important. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Okay, so these are the four, uh, four electrons occupying the three orbitals in the P. Okay, so this is a electron configuration in the, in the third, third row. And what about the fourth row? which is, uh, let's start from the calcium. Calcium, now, I am going to find out argon. Yeah, look, argon is the closest one. And all I need to do is uh, filling up this 4s2 electrons. So 4s2, okay? So that's, that's why it's a 20. So remember, this is just a recap for you. The neon is like 10, and the argon is like 18, right? Argon is like 18. And so I think that they are 2, 10, 18. So those are the number of uh, the valent, uh, number of total electrons that uh, the, this the helium, 2, 10, 18 has. Okay? So this is something that important uh, number, almost like a February 10th, 2018, but it's, it has nothing to do with that. Just a 2 electron, 10 electron, 18 electron. That's a number of electron of this uh, very stable, noble uh, gases shown up here. At any rate, so let's go back to the finish the last problem set, which is uh, gallium. So GA, so gallium is right there, and you got to look at the 31. That means so you start from 18, right? So argon is an 18. And then you fill up two electrons, 4s2. And then you fill up all the electrons right there. That's a 3d10. So there's 3d10 electrons. And then finally, you end, ended up having this, which is a 
going back to 4p and 1 electrons. So those are the electrons right there. So this is when n is 3 and n is 4. Or in, in, that, in the columns uh, that can occupy this. So then they are talking about radius, which is a size. And uh, in the very naive way, there is a uh, protons in the middle. And then this is uh, n is first, n is two. The size is mainly uh, governed by the qu principal quantum numbers. So when n is one, two, three, four. So therefore, which one is the bigger? I mean, the big, big wise, uh, the size, which is uh, B here. B here. I'm going to choose calcium and gallium are bigger than uh, the groups of those uh, three, which is uh, silicon, phosphorus, and silver. Uh, not silver, just sulfur. Okay, and then among that, uh, I am going to uh, consider what is the uh, effective sh uh, shielding, well, effective nuclear charges. So the cal calcium here has a, essentially, you, once you fill up this, you have a two extra shell uh, extra valence electrons, whereas uh, this one is so many. So the because of the shielding of the electrons is less effective by the, the, the valence shell electron, the size-wise is getting smaller when you move left to right. So the calcium is here, therefore, is a bigger. Calcium is bigger because the G effective will be uh, smaller. Uh, whereas uh, for the gallium, uh, the G effective over there is going to be larger than calcium. You can calculate based on the number three problem set, but just a trend that left to right is this is larger, this is a smaller for a given, given row here. So therefore calcium and the gallium, and the calcium is bigger than gallium. And then the same row, same thing here too. This within this uh, three set, we can you can see that they are going to be smaller. They're going to be smaller this way, but you know because this is, this is any three, they are going to be smaller. So uh, within this, silicon is bigger, uh, phosphorus second, and the sulfur is the one that's the smaller. So in the size wise, I we can we can write uh, taking the Calcium, gallium, silicon, P, and S. So that's that's the answer. The last one is uh, quite uh, interesting and uh, tricky. Uh, you have to actually has an additional understanding about taking the electron out and the size argument and, and so on. So this is about ionization energy. So it's actually it's ionization energy. I think that you are talking about first ionization energy, IE1. So this ionization energy is energy needed to take the first electron in the valence shell. Okay, so first first electrons out. Okay, so for example, using the diagram shown up here. If it is a uh, calcium, you have uh, two electrons, and so how many energies do you need it to, to take it out from uh, from bound state to the free electron that uh, with the zero energy? So that's the first ionization energy. So energy is needed. You need to you need to which one is easier to take the electrons out? And for the case of the gallium, you have a lot more electron, and then you need to take the electrons out. So uh, which one is easy? So this is the first case, and then the, we are talking about second one, which is uh, this. This is we are talking about one, two, three, four, and this is we are talking about one, two, three, right? So I mean, that's, I'm just putting a four as a, I, the, the reference point, and we are talking about taking the electron from here and taking the electron from here.
which is easier? This is will be a easier uh, easier to to remove electron in the valence shell, right? So it's easier for because it's larger. So therefore, I can see that ionization energy wise, which is easier. Uh, calcium and the gallium, those are simply because they are in the four cell, so this is a smaller, and it takes more energy to take this one out, which is uh, this uh, silicon, phosphorus, and uh, sulfur. So I can, I, can, I can see that. And then, so for, for the same one, which one, which elect, which one is easy to, to get the electron out? The calcium cases where Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You have a uh, two electrons, right? And whereas uh, this one is uh, a lot of electrons, I think that there's a lot, which is uh, okay. So I'm talking about one, two, ten, so twelve, thirteen. So the thirteen electrons here. This is uh, two electrons uh, hovering around, and each electrons are uh, negative charge. So there's a uh, repulsive interactions. So if this one is tossing the electron out, this one is tossing the electron out, this one is easier to remove. So therefore, I can say gallium is smaller than the calcium. Right? Okay. So, and then it takes more energy for the silicon state now. And so let's look at the diagram that I drew before. We are talking about removing this electron and phosphorus are talking about in removing electron from here and sulfur is removing electron from this uh, this side okay so we are we are talking about let's say I'm gonna use uh, this one so I want to remove this electron I want to remove this electron I want to take this I guess I'll take this electron out right which one will be the easiest? That might be a little bit neat to think about it, but actually among these three choices, this one will be the most difficult. The reason is fine because of the, the pairing issue. I think I talked about the D5 orbital is a, there's a synergy. This is a essentially SP, not, no, not SP, this is a 3p3, the three orbital, so this is uh, nicely paired up. So there's a synergy that you want to take this one away, is make it, you know, I don't like it that much. Okay, I'm not happy that I don't want to do that. So therefore, among those, I can split into two groups. One group is the one in the higher, in the p will be the high, difficult, and then the si and s is the last remaining that I can, I need to figure it out, okay? So, so, uh, so therefore, I need to figure this one out, and this, is, this one occupies the one. So, you know, gallium is the easiest, calcium goes next, and then phosphorus is the most difficult, okay? And this is because of the three electrons in the N is three, and this is simply N is four, and then the and then which one is easier to, to remove that. Okay, so then, then now I need to think about which one is easier to remove. Do I is it easier to remove electron from here? Or is it e easier to remove electron from here? Right? So do you remember the size argument here? Uh, so the silicon, phosphorus, and the sulfur. I'm exaggerating, but that's the, the psi atomic uh, radius for, for the one, right? There's an electron hovering around, and I need to, I need to take it out. So with, within the size argument, this is a farthest, so this is a easier. This is difficult. Okay, just argument-wise, this will be the sequence. But like I said, this is an exception to the rule because of this pairing, right? Spin pairing. And then that, that's an energy 
uh, really uh, getting e uh, lower. So because of that, easier means a lower ionization energy. So I'm going to write silicon there. And then finally, this is a S. Okay? So that's a sequence that I am going to finish up. So once again, uh, that I have to look for the sizes, and then I have to look for the way that how the electrons are being removed, and then the, and this is a way that uh, we, can, we, can, we can figure it out. OK, so and the last thing to also uh, you can think about it is this is an S orbital, right? And then you see this though, if you want to remove the electron, this is an electron that actually spins a pair up and down. So that's the another factor that you can think about it in addition to the size, uh, because this is a pair up, they are kind of bonded, quote unquote, bonded together, they are paired up. And you have to take this one, and this is an additional, addition, additional energy you need it when you take these electrons are paired up, and you want to remove the one electron out, and there's an additional energy you need it. So therefore, to take this electron out is more difficult than to take the electron out. But the, the most difficult one is take this electron that nicely spaced out and the paired up uh, in a way the spin pairing. Okay, thanks for your listening. Uh,